is Pastor Elwood and how did we find him? This episode of In the Water podcast is going to be featuring our revival pastor, Pastor Elwood. He has brought so much joy into our lives as he goes around with us, traveling with KG Ministry and bringing the Word of God to life. Today we're going to be talking about his story, how we found him, and we even go into some subjects that most pastors don't want to talk about, like demons. Before we dive into our podcast, I do want to say that we will still be having the North Carolina Revival. God has already made the plans. This is His Revival. And as long as we're able to get there, then good Lord willing, we will still have the Revival. My heart goes out to all the people devastated by this hurricane. We actually still don't even have power where I'm at. We're on day four of no power. But nevertheless, we are just blessed. There's a lot of people waking up today without a home, with lost ones, with lost pets, and a lot of traumatic things that happened with this hurricane. So our hearts go out to everybody in North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, all the places that were hit by these storms and devastated these areas. We thought really hard about canceling this revival. This is our 16th revival, and we've not ever had to cancel nor postpone a one of them. This one was dangerously close to being canceled or rescheduled. But unfortunately, the flyer has circulated for so long, we were fearful that someone would show up and we wouldn't be there. So no matter what the circumstances are, as long as we are able to get there in our car, we will be there for anybody who shows up at North Carolina Revival. My apologies to anybody who had plans to come there and can't now. We do understand that the roads are terrible. We also understand that the airports are not going to be very pleasant in those areas. So if you need to postpone this and come to a different revival, please, by all means, put your safety first. If anything changes with the location between now and this weekend, we will make sure to let you know on all of our social media platforms about the location. Keep an eye out for updates on all of our platforms. Now let's start the podcast with Elwood. I am so excited for you to get to know him a little better. Elwood is somebody that is very important in my life. When I was looking for a revival preacher, he was the one God sent. So I'm very excited for you to get to know him, hear his story, and why he now travels with KG Ministry. I hope you enjoy this episode of In the Water Podcast. This is Pastor Elwood. Most of y'all have probably already seen his face all over the revival videos, but today I want to talk to him about his testimony, and I want to explain how I met him and how he came to be our revival pastor. So first and foremost, welcome Pastor Elwood. Thank you very much. (laughs) He's not nervous at all. (laughs) Uh, We're very excited to have him here. He, um, he's changed my life, and I want to explain how I met him. I knew that God was pushing me to revival. He kept showing me this vision of this big white tent. (laughs) And there was a Southern gospel songs playing. And there was this man's voice that was so heavily anointed coming from the tent. And so I started searching for the tent first, right? I'm like, where's this revival? And so I would just be looking it up and trying to find where this revival was. I found one in Texas, almost flew there. Oh my! And God said, that's not it. And I said, okay, I'm waiting. My kids walked into a card shop (laughs) in Lexington, Kentucky. And there was a man there. And we just got to chit-chatting. And he showed me this picture of his farm out of nowhere. We wasn't talking about revival or nothing. And he showed me this picture on his iPad of this farm. And I started crying. And he started crying. He didn't even know why he was crying. (laughs) He was crying and I was crying. And I said, that's where the revival is going to be. And he just kind of looked at me and nodded at his head, you yeah. know. And and I said, I've had visions of a revival, and it's going to be here. And then he, obviously, we talked and got permission. So then it comes time to find the tent. Well, we found the tent very easily. Someone donated it for the day. And then it was finding the preacher. And so we were attending this one church at the time down the road. And we were having some conflict in the church, you know, with uh, what we're doing. Some people don't want to take it outside those four walls. Mm -hmm. They want it to stay contained. And we were having issues. And so we decided to move on to try to find another church. 
So around the time that we were church hopping, we would go here and we would go there and it just, it wasn't right. And then we came to your church. Mm. Well, your son's church, yeah. but he's the head pastor there. But it just so happened that you were preaching and I was crying <laughs> and you was probably like, this girl is crying before I've even started. <laughs> but I knew from your voice, I recognized your voice. And I knew that was who God was showing me was supposed to be the revival pastor. Mm. And now I had to ask you. And so I was too scared that day. <laughs> I went home and I prayed about it and just had confirmation after you taught your lesson. It was, what manner of a man is this? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it stuck with me so deeply. And I knew it was you. But I prayed on it and I said, give me courage and I'll go back there. <laughs> and next Wednesday, I'll ask him. And so next Wednesday rolled around and I put my big girl pants on. <laughs> And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> and I, I just told you, I said, we're we're having a revival. And I want you to pastor it. Mm. And um, I'm pretty sure you said, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was excited and I, I was ready. But I also was, you know, this was my first revival. Mm -hmm. Everything was in God's hands. It was all his plans, not ours. But you still had to say yes. Mm -hmm. It was up to you. And you said if you want me there, I'll be there. And yeah. I said, well, I want you there. <laughs> yeah. So June 1st rolls around and we get there and it was something that neither one of us expected. No, it was absolutely not. It was beyond words, but I want to talk about how you felt at your first big, <laughs> big, huge revival like that. What was your, what was your take on the first Kentucky revival? Well, after I told you I'd be there, Somebody asked me, said, do you know what you got yourself into? <laughs> and uh, I said, absolutely not. Nope. <laughs> but I said, uh, I'm ready to dive in. Yeah. And so uh, uh showed up there and uh, seen these people in there. And people kept telling me, said, uh, there's probably going to be a thousand people there. Have yeah. you ever preached before a thousand people before? I said, no. And, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it showed up there, cars everywhere and people lined up on the creek bank and uh sat there for a while and uh, uh then you got up and prayed and announced and talked there for a little while and then you said i'm getting in the water and so everybody started leaving i, know. I, said, I, and I thought up. to myself what am i doing here then <laughs> <laughs> and, but then they all started coming back and then the yes. line uh come right down beside mm -hmm. the tent yep. and uh, i think i preached on that day uh, the woman at the well yeah and uh people were just they were just focused in they was yeah. they was locked in even though they were standing in line and uh, uh getting ready to go down and be baptized they was just locked in and mm -hmm. people sitting in the chairs and standing around outside and uh, it was just absolutely fantastic but the best thing that was there was the holy spirit amen i mean amen. he was all over mm -hmm. that place yes and uh it made it so easy. Mm -hmm. It took all the uh, uh, nerves away, I guess mm -hmm. what you might say. And uh, the words just just float. Yeah. And uh, it was absolutely a wonderful experience that when I left there uh, after dark at night, mm -hmm. got showed up about 1030 yeah. that morning, left there after dark at night. And, and I thought about that and thought about that. And then I got thinking about the people. Yeah that comes and, and once they're baptized, it seemed like the weights of the world mm -hmm. is just lifted off of them. Yeah. And uh, they're so happy that they're, they're free. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, them that I set free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to be free. Yeah. But I had myself a ball at that, at that revival. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and I've missed uh, two of them. Yep. Uh, and, but I've got to go to two other ones. And I've had myself a time, <laughs> and I have enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I wondered after I had uh, stepped down from pastoring and going to my son's church, what was I really going to be doing? Yeah. And then uh, then you showed up, <laughs> you know, uh, who would have ever thought. Yeah. But uh, I have flat out enjoyed myself. But more than anything, I love to see the people mm -hmm. get delivered. I know. Get delivered. I know. Me yeah. too. The Kentucky one, you know, that was our first Kentucky one, but yeah. now we've had two. So we've had two Kentucky ones and, and the last one we had was 
it's so different in a lot of ways because God has shown us what to do. He's mm-hmm. shown us what our positions are and how to how to help free his people. You know, yeah. we're, we're the vessels. We're the ones that have to be willing to say, here's my hands and feet. Um, and now the last one, <laughs> I looked up at one moment, Elwood had a chain and he was shaking that chain. And I was like, yeah, go Elwood. <laughs> and, uh, and I just remember before I got in the water, I just, I was filled with just so much joy that you did say yes. Mm-hmm that you you gave up whatever you had thought you were going to do the rest of your life mm-hmm. and you just said okay like this is this is what the lord wants me to do i've been commissioned and here we go yeah and a lot of people at retirement age would just be like i got coffee to drink and porches to sit on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and you you just you know and i never expected you to come to colorado mm-hmm. i don't know if i told you that but i mm-hmm. never expected you to want to come to colorado oh, my. And when I told you about Colorado, you text me and you said, I want to go to Colorado. <laughs> and that was it. Mm-hmm. And you were all in. There yeah. was no hesitation. There was no wishy-washy. You were all in. The absolutely. Lord needed you and you were ready. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned a chain. I, I, I brought that that morning. Yeah. But then uh, when you got up that morning at the revival at Carlisle, and you mentioned Jesus Christ as a chain breaker. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I knew then yeah. <laughs> that it was right. Sometimes yeah. you take these things, you don't know if it's exactly right, but when you yeah. mentioned that, wow. it was right mm. for the chains to be broken off the people. Yeah. And a lot of these people, uh, they don't have the physical chains on them, but they have the spiritual oh, chains. Yes. And that's where it's so vitally important. Uh, to lead them to Jesus Christ where he can break the chains, mm. those spiritual chains off of their life. Amen. And we've got a world of people out there that is walking around with the spiritual chains mm-hmm. that is up on them. And yeah. they, uh, and if you could just see them it, or look in the spiritual realm and see these things, it yeah. would be unbelievable. Yep. Unbelievable. But I knew when you said that, it was on. It was on. It was he on. He was ready for those chains. <laughs> yes, and I was. Come off people. That's right. That's I was right. ready too. And when I saw that, I just, I knew, I'm like, you know, you're, you're on fire. I don't think you know how on fire you are. But when we were in Colorado, uh, my best friend was there, Rose Nama Yunus. Yeah. And she was, I couldn't find her, first of all. She was supposed to come in the water with me. And I'm like, where did Rose go? Mm-hmm. And I'm looking everywhere for Rose. And I stood there and one of, uh, one of our volunteers come up to me and they're like, Kayla, what are you waiting on? And I'm like, I'm waiting on Rose. <laughs> they're like, Rose is right there. And she was sitting down with her whole family and her friends and just watching you Oh my! and you were preaching and they were just so in the moment. I almost didn't want to come and, and say mm. anything to her, but she was sitting there and she was, she was cross cross legged and she was like this. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got to go get her. It's time for her to come in the water. But I sat down and she said, this is amazing. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> And she had, you know, went to church before, but she had long time got out of church Mm -hmm. and church wasn't on her radar. It wasn't somewhere she wanted to be. It hurt her. You know, church hurt is so real. There's a lot of people that struggle with that. Yeah. And they just, they see it more as, um, you know, the devil run them out of the church, basically. Mm -hmm. And Rose, for her and her whole family now, they're all going to church. Mm -hmm. And it's because they saw a preacher that was actually still for God someone that wasn't judging or condemning and you were just teaching them about the right ways of the Bible. And it was enough, you know, and I think that's part of the problem with the churches today is that a lot of them, they're not there to bring the people to Jesus. They're there for a uh, routine or just a routine they've slipped in. And so when I saw you and you were on fire and then seeing people respond to you, Mm -hmm. you know, these people in line, they're just, they don't care if they have to wait their six hours. They're there because yeah. they're ready for, for Jesus. Absolutely. And when they're watching you and they're waiting in line and they're, they're listening and they're, they're crying, they're responding, they, they're feeling the Holy Spirit and it's you preaching, you know, you showing them the love of Jesus in those moments. Yeah. And, you know, no matter what they've done in churches, that churches have hurt them, you restore that in that moment of them seeing a man of God. Mm-hmm. It restores that for them. Yeah. And I think that's a lot, of, a lot of reason we have a lot of people out of church today because yeah. they've been hurt in mm-hmm. church. 
I don't think going to church ought to be a sad thing. Yeah, no. It ought to be a joyful thing. I yeah. mean, uh, some of these churches I've been in and I've preached in, uh, you couldn't get an amen out of them if you stuck them with a hat pin, <laughs> you know. Uh, some of them needs a Mississippi squirrel turn loose in them, <laughs> you know. To see if they've got any spirit of what uh, yes. at all, you know. Yes. But church ought to be a place of joy yeah. because you're going to hear about Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Yes. And being preached about Jesus Christ and G- what Jesus Christ can do for you. You know, he can, like he's already talked about, it, he can set you free. Yes. And uh, free from the bondages, free from the shackles and chains. Mm. And uh, I'm afraid that people has got this uh, demeanor about them that, that, well, I'm just going to go to church to be yeah. going to church, and mm-hmm. I'll go back to church just because we go do that. Yeah. It's it's just a, a hereditary or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I think people ought to be happy instead of looking like a mule-eating wizard bars. <laughs> you know, I, I, I really do. But uh, be joyful. I, mm-hmm. I don't care a bit when, that old, when my son's preaching or anybody else to stand with my feet and, and raise my hand yes. and say, praise the Lord, you know. We need that this we day and time. We do need that. Because uh, the world has, has just about stolen it out of there. Yeah. The, they've about stolen the victory from the people. Yeah. And the, and the Christians ought to be victorious. They ought to be the happiest people in the world. Mm-hmm. They yeah. certainly should. And, uh, yeah. and so I, I just love these revivals that we go on. And mm-hmm. I've got addicted. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I've got addicted to them. And I've, I've, I've got addicted to see the people set free. But through Jesus Christ... We can have more joy than we can ever imagine if yes. we would just accept him, live by him, let him lead us and guide us through mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit, and uh, we can be victorious yes. in this world that's gone mad trying to please itself. Ooh, that hmm. is, that'll preach. <laughs> <laughs> I think you hit the nail on the head. There's so many people out there that are searching for like yeah. pleasurous things and it's, it's temporary. They're finding temporary pleasure in whatever it may be because it won't sustain you. It no. won't fill the void that you have unless you, you have the peace of Jesus yeah. Christ. Like Jesus is who gives us peace. So Colorado, that one was very special in a lot of ways. That was a, uh, sight to behold for this little boy from Cobb Hill, <laughs> Kentucky, you know, uh, I've seen pictures of Colorado and the mountains and things yeah. like that, but I never dreamed I'd ever be there. Yeah. And so when we, Walt and I and his two boys went up there, uh, what a fantastic time. I think Michael went with us as well. Yep, all the men. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we got up there and we kept climbing and climbing <laughs> and climbing. And, and uh, I think we ended up about... Uh, 12 miles above sea level or something like that. Wow. Above the tree line. But it was absolute beautiful uh, to look at those mountains. And uh, still had some snow uh, mm. up there on, in some of those places. And so we uh, got up there, and, and I think uh, Waylon wanted to see an elk. That's my son. And yep. <laughs> uh, finally, as we was going up there, why, uh, Walter or one of the kids may have said, there's an elk. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we seen it walk down over the hill, and we went on around and, and pulled off and uh, looking down, and there was a whole herd Ooh. of elk down there. But but I could understand now, an old preacher from West Virginia told me, if I was younger, he said I'd sell everything I had and go to Colorado, move to Colorado, because wow. he loved those mountains. And those mountains are special. They're they just are. absolutely special. I'll tell you what, it was it was beautiful. And the roads going up there, they didn't have no guardrails or nothing. So yeah. I'm glad Walt had a hold to <laughs> had a hold to the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, it's it's something that uh, I'll never forget. Yeah. And uh, who knows? Maybe one of these days we'll be back out there and, and we can climb them mountains again. Amen. But I really, really enjoyed it. The Lord blessed us that day yeah. uh, tremendously, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. I'll never forget. It's uh, funny you say we should go again. <laughs> there was so many people after we left there in the comment section. We didn't know you were in Colorado. <laughs> I mean, so many people have asked me, when are you coming to Colorado? I'm like, we just left. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely think we will be back to Colorado. Yeah. Revivals, I, I just love revivals. I know you do. I do. And uh, I can't help, I fall in love with the people. I know. You know, just those folks that we see come to the water and everything and, you, you you spend a very little short time with them, 
but you just fall in love with yeah, them. You do, and because you care about them, you mm-hmm. you care what's happening in their lives, and yeah. and the victorious thing is when you see them with their face shining like the noonday sun when they mm-hmm. come out of that water, yeah. with their hands outstretched and uh, just praising the Lord. They've yeah. had the shackles and chains dropped off, mm-hmm. but uh, I just love revivals. I do too. I love reading the testimonies, all the testimonies of of things that you wouldn't quite believe yeah. until you've seen them in person. And then it's like, wow, like Jesus freed you truly, yeah. you know? And Absolutely. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. So after North Carolina, then we'll be going to Texas. Texas. Have you been to Texas yet? I've never been to Texas, and I'm looking forward to seeing that place. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I think it's going to be big from what I've heard. And then we got Florida, and then after Florida, we'll we'll have a pause to see where the Lord leads us. And, you know, we do get pulled a lot of places. We have people in the comments that will say, come here, come there. It's the needs everywhere. Yeah, my first revival. And uh, it came out of the wild blue yonder. Yeah. And uh, I didn't even have a church. I was in church. Uh, I wasn't a pastor then. But a lady walked up to me, and she said, Elwood said, why don't you have a revival? Okay. And I thought, how am I going to have a revival? I don't have a church. I don't have a pew. I don't have no chairs. I don't have no pulpit. I don't have anything. And I began to pray. And I said, Lord, I said, uh, uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat of a Gideon. I said, I want to know, I want to know for sure. And I said, uh, if you will tell me, or if you have somebody else tell me wow. to have a revival, I said, I'll have it. I didn't know how I would have it. Yeah. But I said, I'll answer the call. Wow. And I went to the funeral home to visit uh, uh, a friend that had passed away and walked out of that funeral home and walked outside. And this lady was standing out there and said, Edward said, when are you going to have a revival? Ooh. I'm telling you what, I like to pass out. <laughs> and uh, That's I a said, bad place to pass out there, yeah, Edward. That, that's exactly home. right. But uh, anyway, I went home and I said, Deb, I said, you're not going to believe this. I said, uh, this such and such person, a lady down at the funeral home, asked me, said, when am I going to have that revival? And uh, I said, Deb, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But it went on, and I got got some friends where we was going to church at, and had a good friend, and he said, uh, Edward said, uh, I can get a tent for you. Okay. I said, He said, I'm in the National Guard. And he said, I can get a tent. He said, we can set you up a tent. Wow. I said, that sounds like a plan right there. I said, let's yeah. get it. So uh, didn't have no chairs. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, went to see Brother Sizemore, and he loaned me 90 chairs. Wow. And uh, so we set up the uh, the tent, put the chairs around uh, under it. I said, uh, we don't have any sewn books. And I knew this old church back in our own Patsy that I'd preached uh, homecomings once a year in. Didn't have any electricity with two before seats. And uh, I called them and asked them about... Uh, about the song books, and they said, certainly, you can use those song books. Wow. So we got over there, and uh, the church door was locked. They were the keepers of it. And uh, the gentleman said, well, said, I've got a bunch of keys at the house. said, I'll go home and get them. And he brought those keys out there and went all the way around that lock, and not one of those keys would work. He said, i got another set at the house. said, I'm sure it's in that, in that set. So he goes back to the house and brings the other keys back. And... Uh, he tried that lock, and not a one of them would fit that lock. Well, he said, "I've got some more to house. I don't know where he, what he's doing all these keys." But anyway, while he was gone, uh, I placed that lock in the palm of my hand, yeah. and uh, went around that key, and one of them slipped in there just like it was made for it. Wow. And I turned that key, and that lock popped open. Yeah. And uh, we didn't think nothing about it. We went into the church, gathered the song books up, and uh, the gentleman came back. And he said, I see you found the key to that lock. And uh, I said, yeah. I said, it's on this keychain here. Well, he said, which one is it? I said, I have no idea. I said, we'll just find out. We'll just lock it back and uh, and take the keys and go back around. I said, we found one. We did that three times. And we not a one of those keys it. fit in there. Wow. Not a one. And so we got all that. And then we didn't have a pulpit. Mm-hmm. And a, another guy told me, he said, I got a pulpit sitting in the woods, the woods of all wow. places. And he said it could use a little work, but he said, you're welcome to it. So uh, I go over and get the pulpit, bring it back. And well, we didn't have an altar. 
So I went down to my grandmother's house and pulled up some tuba tents. That's a half a mile away. And uh, made, it, made an altar, put some old carpet over it, and made an altar there. And so uh, I got all those friends that helped me. I said, uh, we want to anoint this tent, every chair in it, the pulpit and everything, because we don't know where it's been, what's been done under it, what's been said under it. We want it godly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they came up, and uh, we anointed that tent and everything. <laughs> anyway, it went on. We had that revival the first night. We had it in my front yard. The first night, we had 37 people. Wow. The second night, we had 50-some people. Wow. And the Lord said, have it three days. And yeah. that's what I, I was going to do. The third day, we had 80 people Ooh. in my front yard. And some of them were so sick, they couldn't even get out of their vehicles. They pulled their vehicles up beside the tent wow. and listened to the word of the Lord. And uh, at, uh, after that was over with, why well, everybody had left. And so, uh, uh, but I got ahead of myself. I was broke. I was unemployed. Yeah. Had a, had a uh, mortgage, car payments, three kids put through school. And we were just flat out broke. Uh, and so uh, I got an old electric cord and went through the sock drawers to find some money to go down to Mead Stewart Center to buy some pigtails where I could cut electric cord into where we could have lights in there. Wow. And, uh, but after that revival was over with, at 1.30 in the morning, the Lord woke me up. And uh, I went out, got up and got dressed and went outside. And I turned the lights on uh, under that old tent. And that day, we had a monsoon just about come through. And uh, the fog was raising up out from under the hill. And when I turned the lights on in that tent, where every hole that was in that tent is like a bead of light come out through there. Oh, wow. It was absolutely beautiful. Wow. And I could kick myself for not taking a picture, but I didn't. But I've got it in my mind. Yeah. And that's the first revival that I ever had. Wow. And it was something else. It was something else. How old were you then? Oh, my I was only in my uh, probably uh, late 30s. So the Lord has called you to revival about your whole life. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, certainly is. Yeah. I announced my calling in 94. Wow. That is incredible. So here we are. Here we are. <laughs> like now, this is, I don't know how many revivals you've had since, but it's oh been my. a lot. Yeah. Because you, so when I found you, you were going to revivals all around the area. Like you were still going out and you were still, yeah. even though you call yourself retired, yeah. which by the way, you need to <laughs> redefine that word. <laughs> you are not retired. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, but, you know, retirement, a lot of people do. They just kind of give up, you know, and they say, well, I've done enough, but you're just really getting started. Um, like you are the, ready. The latter, I, the, I'm looking for the later years of my life to be more productive for Christ than the beginning wow. years. I am. That almost I am brings thrilled. me to tears. I'm happy. And uh, so we're just going to, we're just going to lay the ax at the root of the tree, be on fire for the Lord yeah. and, and keep going. Amen. Keep going. I love it so much. I'm, I'm ready to wherever the Lord leads us. I'm, yes. I'm ready. Revival is, is now. And we see all over the news. I know they don't like to show it a lot, but mm -hmm. revival's everywhere right now. Yeah, yes, There it are is. people waking up. Yeah. They are on fire. They're ready mm -hmm. to do the Lord's will, to stop living in sin and mm -hmm. just come to the Lord. And so we're seeing this. It's kind of like the harvest, you know, where there's the, the workers are few, you know, but the harvest is plenty. And I think that that's who God's raising up now is the people that's going to yes, work. Absolutely. Going to be his hands and feet. He needs people, vessels. Yeah. He needs people that has made up their mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, uh, the devil cannot uh, trick them up. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been through the fire. They've yeah. been through all that. And they know who has brought them through. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, uh, he's, got, he's, got some, uh, he's got some Ezekiels and John the Baptist and yeah. Elisha's and all mm -hmm. them folks out there. It's yep. just a matter of finding where they're at. Right. Yep. It's just a matter you speak of John the Baptist, I never, um, you know, I didn't think of baptizing. That wasn't, it was never a thing that I had thought, what if we're not baptizing people right? That was nothing that I ever, ever thought. Mm -hmm. I was baptized 
probably eight years old when I was baptized. And I don't remember that at all. I don't remember going to church there. Don't remember anything about it. And so when I decided to get rebaptized, I had I had started reading the Bible every day. I was ready for yeah. something a little more. And I went to my local church that I had been, you know, visiting at mm-hmm. the time. And when I was baptized, it was, and I hate to say it, meaningless. It was just a very quick, when I came out, I was, I was crying because I knew it wasn't what God was trying to show me. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand, you know. Well, my son was supposed to be baptized that day as well. And it's nothing's coincidence with the Lord. But yeah. the... Uh, baptismal uh the the hot water was the only one that worked so the cold water wouldn't work and it was just the hot water it was worse than a hot tub so the kids that had planned on being baptized they wouldn't get in the water (laughs) and (laughs) so waylon you know i have my son waylon he's he's a little on that wild side (laughs) he didn't care and he started to go in the water and the preacher stopped him and he said no it's too hot and waylon said i'm fine and Mm. he said no it's too hot and so he gets water like this and he pours it on Waylon's head and Waylon was mad as fire. Mm. He said, Mama, that was not right. I you know, we've been reading the Bible. We had mm-hmm. read, you know, every night I had started reading the Bible to my kids and, you know, they were they were educated. Yeah. They were starting to learn right from mm-hmm. wrong. And he said, Mama, that was not right. That was not like John the Baptist. And I was like, you know, you're right. I I don't really know what I was supposed to feel, but mm-hmm. you're right. And so the Lord had me on this journey of you know, obviously learning more. And I started really studying and really learning. And um, when Rose found me, she found me on Instagram. She had liked one of my videos, you know. I didn't know who she was because I never (laughs) watched anything like that. I don't watch TV. And and I said her name out loud and we were with some friends and they they had to check my phone. And they're like, that's Rose, not my Eunice. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, she's pretty, you know. (laughs) And they're like, no, 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 no. She is like a two times world champion. And mm-hmm. they're explaining to me who she is. And so her and I were talking back and forth. And um, I go out to Colorado and I met her. And as soon as I hugged her, she, I just knew this was, it was different. She is, she's kind of like my spiritual sister. And so we had a connection right away and we got to talking about our lives. And, you know, she just mentions quickly that one day she wants to be baptized again. Time rolls on and we just, we talk on the phone every day. And one day she asked me to baptize her and I kind of was joking and I'm like, well, come on down to Kentucky and I'll baptize you. (laughs) She says, okay. And they drove 17 hours to our house here in Kentucky and I baptized her in the Creek. And when I started to walk in the water, you know, I had been researching for days of what to say because I I was like, I can't mess this up. (laughs) One of the guys, he's a Gracie, um, which they started the martial arts and he was here filming, you know, Mm. no pressure. First no baptism, but no. no pressure. Um, and when I, all the things that I had studied and thought I would say, I said none of them. I walked in the water, and as soon as my foot hit the water, I had the Holy Spirit power come over yeah. me like never before. Yeah. And God told me everything to say. He told me what to do, and it was nothing like I had thought I taught myself. Mm-hmm. And so from there, we started having friends where God would just stir their hearts and they would just ask, hey, will you baptize me? Yeah. And so I said, well, yeah, you know, come on. And so it it turned into these creek baptisms where I would just have a few people. Mm -hmm. I would baptize them. I would say what the Lord put on my tongue to say. No matter what it sounded like, I would say it. And I would, you know, I would just step in that role of what he was raising me to be. And the first big baptism event was in North Carolina, and I showed up. I had nothing, kind of like what you <laughs> said in your first revival where you made two ends meet. I uh, I showed up. I slept in a tent. I had my Bible. So in my mind, I thought, well, maybe three or four people will show up. And I was very <laughs> excited about it. I was just like, Lord, let it be your will be done. I'm here. And so I put the flyer out, and all I had done was just post a flyer of where I would be. Like, I'm going to be at this lake. <laughs> and I thought... I really didn't have expectations of of how it should go. I just told the Lord I was there and I was ready to serve him. I baptized 54 people that day. Oh, my goodness. And as I looked up, they were coming down this hill in groves, just so many people. And I thought, how? You know, how? 
And as I would baptize people and God would give me new words to say and new new revelation about people, you know, it's scary at first. Yeah. It's, it was scary. And I thought, why do I know that? Like, why why did I know that about that person? You mm-hmm. know, I don't know them. Um, but as I grew and as I learned and as I kept going out as he sent me, you know, he would show me a location and I would just go. I wouldn't give it a second thought. He would show me a location and I would be there. I would put my little flyer out on socials <laughs> and I would just go. And that was the way for uh, 10 events until the Kentucky one. Oh so my. 10 events I had by myself. A lot of times I would have no help at all. No one in the water, no one no one helping. I would just be there myself. And as the numbers grew, uh, the last one that I did by myself, there was a hundred and... I think it was 154 people I had baptized. Oh, my. I felt underqualified. I felt like my body wasn't able. I had all of these stipulations that the devil was giving me of why I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then I said, no, I will do it. You know, I kept teaching every day like I had been doing for years. I just teach. I would teach straight from the Bible. And I just let the Lord use me. I got to the point where I'm like, use me. I don't want to live this life for me. Yeah. I will give up all the things of the world. Absolutely. And I did. I went on that sanctification journey of just giving up anything worldly. Mm. I was just ready for the Lord. Here I am, send me, and here I go. Here you are. And so now, watching God send me people, you mm-hmm. know, I prayed for that. Yeah. After that one where I about broke myself, Yeah. I came home and I paced the porch and I said, Lord, I know this is your will for my life. I know this is my calling. I'm I'm here. I'm ready. Uh, you know, I'm I'm eager. But can I have a little bit of help? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I I prayed. I prayed for help. And so, um, like I said, one of the last ones I did, I met Helena and Michael, mm-hmm. which you know them very well now. Yeah. And they were walking away from the baptism event. It was so cold it was the coldest water i'd been in my whole life <laughs> and you know we we have some cold mountain water where we live yeah, here yeah. but it was the coldest water i had ever felt <laughs> i did not know about waders yet <laughs> and i was just in this water for eight hours freezing and when i when i baptized helena and michael they come out of the water and as they were walking away god loudly told both of them help her oh my help her. These people that I had baptized in different states, God started putting the same calling on their life. Just that little seed of help Mm -hmm. her. And, and they did, and they came and they started to help and they started becoming, they just fell gracefully right into the roles of the places that I needed. And then you came along. Oh boy. And when I found you, (laughs) it was the same call to help, like help the revival. You had seeds of revival planted from, from way back when in the Mm nineties. And then God showed you this revival. Like it's, it's amazing to have revivals and just have a certain amount, like just a few people. That's all we need. But when you start going out like the Kentucky one and Mm -hmm. you see a thousand people, it's a shock to your system. Yes, it is. And then when you realize that God wants to send you and you say, okay, it is, it's like we're saddling up, you know, like, (laughs) here we go. Here we go. When God puts a calling up on your life to do it, he'll send you the help. Yes, he will. uh, To get it done. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because this thing, I I think it's just going to continue to grow. Oh, yeah. We have a lot to do. Yeah. (laughs) uh, A lot to do. And, uh. But but what a joy to do it! I know. What a I joy know. to do it! That, as I was talking to, uh, uh, what's the guy's name here today? Chaz. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, and I asked him down out there uh, the other day when we was up there at Carlisle, yeah. would you rather be doing anything else? Yeah. And uh, he hesitated for a minute, and and then I think I went up and led somebody else down, and mm-hmm. he said, "You asked me." He said, "No, I'd rather not be doing anything else." Yeah. And. Uh, do you know and, why he paused? Why? He paused because he was trying to come up with one of your phrases. Oh. <laughs> he wanted to tell you that he was happier than a two-toed tick. On a hairless he, hound dog. <laughs> he couldn't remember the whole saying. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Yep. Oh, my goodness. That's exactly why he said he paused. He said, <laughs> he said I was trying to think of what to say, but I wanted it to be something he would say. <laughs> I said, Chaz, you will never be as cool as Elwood. You just stop right now. <laughs> oh, goodness. 
but yeah. uh, it, it it's an honor yeah. and a privilege uh, to be able to uh, work for Christ I know. and see people one to Him, mm. and uh, I'd rather not be doing anything else. No, nothing else. Me either. So there's nothing better than to be the ones to to work for the Lord. Yeah. You know, like for for God Almighty, just to work for him mm -hmm. is the biggest privilege we could oh, ever yeah. have <clears throat> that lady that we baptized in uh, uh, Carlisle when she hit that water yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to hit that water too and rejoice <laughs> with her you know and... you should have <laughs> we won't make fun of you one bit <laughs> she just had the joy of the Lord upon yes. her yes she did yep. she she had been set free yes and uh, yes oh I'm telling you what if if the church world could get set free. I know. You know? I know. I know they say they're free, but <laughs> I, I, well, I won't go there. But anyway. Uh, I go I there a lot, but <laughs> it's different from being, you know, you've seen the inside. Like, you've seen the churches from the inside, yeah. and you just want to take them to the outside and just yeah. say, look. Yes. <laughs> like, just open your eyes, open. because... God is showing us, and you know, He shows us through the whole Bible. Yes, like he does. Jesus' whole mission here. If we reflect upon the Gospels and mm -hmm. we look at His mission on earth, yeah. why don't we learn from those? And we, you know, take the man made things out and just say, no, this is how Jesus yeah. taught us. This is what He actually said. Yeah, you know, He didn't say to go to the synagogues and make everyone come to us. Mm -hmm. He said, go therefore. That's right. And baptize nations, you know. He's, Absolutely. And so it's. It's a privilege to go. It's a privilege to, you know, and I'm not saying that churches are bad because you and I know that we need them. Yeah, we need absolutely. the church. We need the church. But we also need the church to start waking up a little and yeah. start feeding the people. He said, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. And these people are coming and they are hungry and they are hurt. And a lot of them are leaving the same way they came in. Yeah. And it's, you know, why why do we have to have baptisms once every few you know, a few months. Why, mm -hmm. why do we have to, you know, schedule it? Like, why yeah. don't we just say, oh, you ready tonight? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's exactly right. And it's, it's gotten so far away from what God intended it to yeah. be. Now it's, it's a ceremony of water mm -hmm. and it's basically just, choo -choo. yeah, and that's it. And it's a golf clap in the church, yeah. you know, and it's, it's such a dramatic difference from what we see now. Yeah. And, you know, we were once blind, too. We Absolutely. were once thinking that it was normal as well. Yeah. And now when you see the truth, the truth shall set you free. Absolutely. And you see the truth on these people's faces and yeah. their glory, and there's much more to it. Absolutely. And, you know, you and I talked about the process before mm -hmm. because a lot of people watch these videos, and they do see the glory, and that's all they see. Mm -hmm. But what they don't see... Yeah. Is that they show up and you're preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. You're teaching the line. You're showing people, you know, and, mm -hmm. and preaching. All the people throughout the line, we have volunteers praying with them. Yeah. We have people that are serving on the land. Mm -hmm. And then they come down and they meet salvation teams. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and people, if they watch all the videos, they've seen this because they're able to see, uh, yeah. you know, see the rotation of what we're doing. But so many people that have the religious mindset, they come in the comment sections and they'll say, well, I hope you know baptism don't save you. Mm -hmm. And it, it's those points where you think, why would you ever see this beautiful person coming and being set free and the yeah. joy on their face and all you can think of is the water don't save you? God doesn't give you those thoughts. That's right. God just set that person free. You should yeah. be rejoicing with the angels. Absolutely. And so we encounter these things, but I want to show, and I'm like, we have the salvation teams that make sure. I mean, there mm -hmm. is not a person not even one that comes to us without meeting that salvation team. Yeah. You know, it's a process. They go through that and they explain what salvation is. Because mm. the thing is, a lot of people come to these waters not saved. That's right. They come to these waters because they saw a video on social media. Mm -hmm. And here they are just trusting us to show them what it means to be saved. Yeah. And so the salvation teams are there to explain that and not only explain it, but to lead them yeah, to absolutely. salvation. And when they lead them to salvation, then they come to us yeah. and we pray before, mm -hmm. we baptize, and we pray after. Mm -hmm. And so the process of it is not anything superficial. It is not a quick dunk. It right. is a, hey, come and experience the glory of the Lord in the way that he's taught us to show you. You know, yes, in absolutely. The, in the biblical way. And when they leave there, they're never the same. No, they're not. It's been a year of me baptizing now, and we have 
thousands of testimonies. Oh my. And the people that were set free are still free. Amen. Because when they show the, show the joy of Christ in their life, yeah. uh, you know, to an outward world out there, and they look at, well, what happened to them? Yeah. What happened to them? Mm-hmm. I'm sure that when Paul was saved, uh, as he went into the city called Straight, you know, and yep. Ananias went in, laid his hands upon him. Why, well, you know, uh, Paul was sent someplace else, and they said, mm-hmm. well, Lord, we've heard many bad things about yeah. this cat. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, uh-huh. but uh, through his preaching yeah. and his living for Christ yep. showed what he really was. Yes, he did. may have been uh, uh, a persecutor at one time, mm-hmm. but now he become a deliverer yes, uh, through Jesus Christ to other people. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's a big problem today, too, is people yeah. is not showing their faith. Oh, true. Showing their faith yep. and uh, telling them what Christ has really done for them. Yes. And how he's delivered them and how he has blessed them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and we're missing the mark. I, we are. A lot of them missing the mark out there because people are wanting something different than mm-hmm. what they've got. Amen. Because it's not working for them. It's not. It's not working for them. And Jesus is showing them. Yeah. You know, he's trying to rise up people to do his will yeah. so that, you know, he can set them free. Absolutely. You know, but they're Absolutely. searching. Yes, they are. And that's beautiful. Yes, it is. Yep. Yes, I'm it ready is. for it. Seek and you shall find. Mm-hmm. Not you know? That shall be open. Mm-hmm. So with baptizing, we essentially watch the Bible come to life. Mm-hmm. Like we watch the stuff that the disciples did and we watch that in front of us happen and sometimes it can be scary. Sometimes it can be heavy. And it's yeah. it's not what we were taught. You know, I grew up in church my whole life. My grandpa was a pastor. And I wasn't taught anything about demons. That's mm-hmm. like a word that people don't want to hear. Mm-hmm. They want to plug their ears immediately. And, and I understand. I understand because it's not something we were taught. Even though it's in the Bible constantly. It is something that people tiptoed around. They're just scared to address the fact of the matter. That there yeah. are demons. That they're real. That people are op- oppressed. They allow things in. Spirits mm-hmm. of addiction. Absolutely. Spirits of anger. Spirits of problems in their lives. And, and it's got them. And it's it's got a hold on them. Mm-hmm. And so I think people are scared <clears throat> to realize it. Because no one wants to think. Oh I might have a demon. No yeah. one wants to think that. And so when they hear the word, it's instant frustration because they don't understand it. But it's all there if they read. Yes. And if they see what the disciples did, then they can really understand that this is real. Absolutely. And a lot of people has laughed at me and everything else. But I didn't believe in demons. I didn't either. I absolutely did not believe in demons. Yeah, I didn't either. And uh, Deb, my wife, she said, Elwood, she said, if you'll seek... Ooh. The Lord will show you, and I did. Mm. So I said, "There ain't no such thing." I I seeked the Lord out on this, and I was going to work one morning. It seemed like everything opened up, and God just let me see in the spiritual rim. Yes. And I seen my car ahead of me, and uh, I seen me driving right into that car. Oh wow! But there was a lady walking on the side of the road. And they're out in there. There don't need to be no lady walking by herself outside the road. Yeah. And I seen the brake lights come on on that car. And I stopped and opened the door and let her again. Okay. And uh, when she got in and she shut the door, uh, the moon was over here on the left. But when she got in and shut the door and I started out, Kayla, I'm telling you what, I, that thing, I seen the hair begin to grow on it. I seen its mouth begin to intrude out. Wow. And, uh, and it, it turned its head right over my head with its jaws open. Yeah. And the only thing I could say was, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Ooh. In the name of Jesus. And I, I kept on down, going down the road, and, and I could see that. It was within the shadow of the moon there. And finally, it just turned around. And, and as I went on out the ridge, it just disappeared. Wow. But I could, when I hit the mountain parkway, I could feel the presence of that thing in my car. I couldn't wait to get out of that car. Yeah. And I parked under a, a nightlight out there. And I got out of that thing, and I ran to get in the building. But just before I went inside, I looked back. And I could still feel the presence 
wow. of that demon spirit yep. in my car. But the presence was yeah. real. Yeah. And uh, and and it's just that's my experience. And I yeah. and th- these are the demons that was made for hell. Oh yeah. You know that's what the hell was made for. The devil and his yes. his demons, mm-hmm. his angels. And uh, yep. here I've got one in my car. And I got home and I told Deb all that. And she said, I told you so. And, but uh, I'll tell you, I don't want never another experience like that. No. Never another one. No. And I know people, I've told people that, and, and they've looked at me and laughed like I was nuts, I know. you know. But uh, that's all right. That I okay. know. Yeah. I know uh, what got in that car that morning. It was something else. And uh, I don't care what they say. There will never be nobody convinced me that there is not demons. Oh, I know. Because they yep. are here. We have baptized a few people, and they manifest for a moment. Yeah. And when I see it, I mean, it's scary, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I never liked horror. I've never liked, no. you know, I've never been into things of the darkness, mm-hmm. and I still don't like it. But God gives us authority. Yeah. And now that I know, you know, that we do have spiritual authority, I can stand in it. Yeah. And whenever I'm faced with one, it immediately, I'm mm-hmm. like out in the name of Jesus. Like it does not hold. Yeah. Like it's not staying around me. <laughs> That's right. I had a lady who, who told me she, she actually brought her son to be baptized. And as I baptized her son, he came out of the water. She looked at me and it was just for a glance. She's just like, can you pray for me too? I've already been baptized, but can mm. you pray for me too? I kind of saw darkness for a second yeah. and I was like, Yep, here I go. And I placed my hand on her. And as soon as I placed my hand on her, I knew it was witchcraft. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I I break all spirits of witchcraft. And she fainted. And I'm like, oh my. Yep. And so when she did, you know, she come to and I I told her, I look at me, you know, and she did. And I made sure her eyes were clear. And she said, I had no idea something was there. And it was that moment when she realized, you know, the weight of what was gone. Yeah. Then she realized, oh man. Something was there. Something was wrong. And I think that a lot of people are realizing now as they, you know, whether they want to believe the spiritual mm-hmm. realms real or not, we are we are fleshly beings, but we are spiritual beings. That's, that's you right. know, when we accept eternity, it's not when we die. We accept eternity when we're alive, mm-hmm. you know, and eternal life is, is our spirit. That's right. And so when people don't understand that we have a spiritual realm mm-hmm. and they just want to live in the physical, I get it. You know, it's easy to live in the physical. It's easier to live in the flesh because, you know, you can block these things out. But just because your eyes are not open and your ears are not open doesn't mean it's not real. That's right. And when they humble themselves enough to -hmm. come to the water and, you know, to come to someone that Mm -hmm. can help them and then they're delivered, they're like, oh, wow. So many people just want to brush past it in the Bible, though. And, you know, Jesus, when he came to show us what to do, when he walked here on earth, Mm-hmm. He was teaching us to heal the sick, yeah. to cast out demons, yeah, that's right. and and people are just scared of it. Yeah, they're just scared. They want the soft side of religion. They mm-hmm. want the sides, you know. But you can't pick and choose the no. Bible. You know, sometimes I feel like I want to ask people, how can you believe in Jesus if you don't believe in anything that he did? That's right. You know, how do you just believe in his resurrection, but you don't believe in none of his other teachings? Absolutely. And so bringing those things, that's why I teach every day on these socials is because I'm trying to show people the real Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not watered down. It's still strong. The word of God holds forever. And I teach, I make sure, you know, no sugar coating, Mm -hmm. you know, no skipping past this whole Bible is to be taught in truth. Absolutely. Not anything to be scared about because the Lord came to show us authority. Yes, he did. He sent us his helper. He sent us the spirit. And, you know, it's up to us whether we reject the Holy Spirit or not. I, want, I just want more of it. Yeah. I want to set everybody free. I yeah. am so ready when I see these people and whether they want to call it demons or whether yeah. they just want to say that they're in chains. It doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. If, if they don't want to acknowledge it, yeah. it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that they want to be set free. Absolutely. It doesn't matter Absolutely. what they call it. doesn't matter what they think it is. They just realize that it is not of God. Yeah, right. And if it's not of God, then it's of the devil. Absolutely. And so I'm ready for all the things of God. I'm, I'm ready to show people light. You know, the light always outshines the darkness. Yes, it does. But it has to be someone's choice. If yes, they it want, does. If they want to keep that darkness and hold on to it, or if they're ready to let it go and live in the light. If they want freedom, they'll come to the light. That's right. And that's where, you, that's where you'll find freedom. Yeah. is in the light of Jesus Christ. Right. It's not in the darkness. No. Uh, 
because it won't give you freedom. No. But Christ will give you the freedom that you so that your whole heart wants to, yes. wants and you deserve it mm -hmm. because uh, He came to give us freedom. He came he to uh, give us a better life. And what more uh, could we ask for than to ask? that from Jesus Christ. You ain't going to get it. It's the first church of Walmart. You're not going to get it uh, out here any place else. It's got to come from Christ. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. That's, absolutely. Those are the things that keeps us fired up for the next one. Yeah. Absolutely. Is to just know that there are going to be people out there that mm -hmm. are going to be starving. Yeah. And Jesus told us to feed his sheep and we're ready. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. I'm <laughs> ready for it. Send me, oh Lord, I'm here. And so is Elwood. <laughs> yeah, we're well, Elwood, ready. Well, Elwood, I thank you so much for being on this podcast. No. We just thank you for, for saying yes. You could have said no. We all have free will. But you said yes to being our revival pastor, and you have blessed more people than I know you don't even want the acknowledgement, but you have blessed <laughs> so many people. And there are times in that water that I am just so grateful that God has raised up a humble pastor like you. And we are just, we are the ones blessed. I know you keep saying you're blessed by the ministry and you're blessed yeah. to work for the Lord, but we are blessed with you. So we just thank you for being on your first podcast ever. And I think that the people are probably thrilled to hear your stories and just to see this side of you. Oh my. So thank you for sharing that with them. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Let's go save the world. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs>